everybody, this is Dr. D from ABA with Dr. D. Today we're going to talk about multiple stimulus without replacement. And a very common type of preference assessment that we use in the field of behavior analysis. We cover multiple stimulus with replacement in one of our other videos. In this particular one, we're going to focus once again on, on MSW. Oh, okay. So let's look at a couple bullet points here. So basically this is an extension of the pair stimuli presentation. Um, here we're going to present an array of three or more stimuli together. And once again, there's two major variations. We have the option of with replacement, which is when the stimulus selected remains in an array in subsequent uh, trials and without replacement, which is the selected stimulus is removed from the array in subsequent trials. And it takes about half the time to complete the procedure and it is fa uh, still fairly accurate. So basically it is a much faster type of method you can use when you're using um, between multiple stimulus with replacement or MSWO. This will be the faster type of method for you. Okay. Uh, here's some st the steps uh, we're going to review really quickly for MSWO. Uh, the number one says, uh, you know, here they say seven items. Once again, it can be three or more to be considered MSWO, but here they're gonna say seven. So seven items will be included in each assessment. Collect the items that are going to be assessed and list them on the data sheet. So you're gonna use a data sheet um, when you're doing this particular process. Uh, the students should be seated in a chair position in front of a table. The items may be placed on a large tray so that they can be removed from the table in between presentations and allow the student to sample each item prior to initiating the assessment. So for example, you're gonna have them taste the food items or manipulate the leisure items for a short period of time. Uh, sequent items randomly in, in a straight line on the, on the tray about five inches apart and instruct the student to pick one, okay? Immediately after the selection, remove the uh, remainder of the items to prevent multiple selections. Record the selected item on the data sheet to the corresponding number. So for example, the first item selected will be written down on the space marked one. After one item is selected, it is not replaced. So for example, after the first presentation of seven items, you will only be, only six will be presented in the next trial. Okay, so basically as soon as the individual uh, picks an item, you're not going to replace it. You're just gonna basically keep the items that you, uh, that have not been picked yet. You're just basically seeing which is the first ones, uh, the order in which they're being picked, in other words, okay? A uh, bit more information here. So number 10 says that prior to the next presentation, rotate the remaining items on the tray by taking the item on the left side and, and, and moving it to the right side. So we're going to be basically switching them over and then shifting the other items so that they are, e uh, again, equally spaced out. Okay. Number 11, present the remaining items and repeat the procedure described to the, uh, above until we basically go through all of them. Continue until all the items are selected until the student does not make a selection within 30 seconds from when they were told to pick one. In the later case, end the session and record the remaining items as not selected. Summarize the data by giving each item a ratio based on the number of items that it was selected. So zero, one over the number of times that it was available, one to seven. So for example, the first four selected items will be uh, given one, 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 two, one, three, and one, four in the order that they were selected. If the student selected four items but did not select any more on the fifth presentation, then all of the selected items will be given the ratio of zero and five. Conduct five sessions in the manner described above, and then sum the ratios for each item across the sessions. So for example, if during five sessions an item produced ratios of one, two, one, three, one, two, one, four, and zero, five, the raw sum would be 416, and the conversion yield a score of 0.25, indicating that the item uh, was chosen on 25% of the trials in which it was available. Once the final percentage score, percentage score is calculated for each item, rank the items from high to low to indicate which items are predicted to be the most effective reinforcers. Okay. So once again, this is, you know, the, the instructions of how to run this particular type of procedure very soon. I'm going to show you the, the video, the video model that's available also at ABA with Dr. D. Uh, we're going to take a look at that. So that's, like I said, the overall instructions of how to do this. If you're working with groups, uh, if you're teaching, you're training people how to run these, you can do role plays in groups or, or with the trainer. So, um, you know, you can do that and also make sure you're providing feedback, you know, when you're doing so. So if you're a trainer, make sure you're giving a lot of feedback as you're running the, the procedures um, and if you're doing the role play process. Okay, so we're going to watch the video now and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, so now we're gonna watch the video model. This is video uh, model, specifically uh, video number 94. It's called Multiple Stimulus Without Replacement or MSWO. So in this particular video, we're gonna watch the implementation of MSWO. Um, and as we watch it, I'll be making some commentary on that. I'll be pausing the, the video here and there to observe certain, certain parts of it. Okay, so here I go. All right, 
Okay, so before, you know, we before everything is basically done, uh, we want to count how many stimuli we have in front, how many items we have in front of the child. So here we have uh, one, two, three, four, five items there. So from the get-go, this qualifies as an MSW because the criteria is three items. Okay, so three and above will be considered MSW. Anything below that, would, we're not, okay? Okay. Perfect. So child picks a uh, penguin. Immediately I go in there and I record the data on, a, on the data sheet. Okay. My turn. Boom. So that's another observation there. So basically I, I move the item on the far left to the far right side, the one on the far right to the left side. Okay, so that's uh, something, once again, that we're gonna rearrange the structure there. Um, and it's something that's necessary. I don't know if I did a good job or not in the, in the coming trials, and sorry if I didn't, um, there, there might be an error there. But once again, one of the main things here that when you're doing this shuffling, it is very necessary to do that so that the child is not just picking on one side because it could happen that the child has a tendency to pick only on the right side or the left side or just in the middle. So you wanna rotate these items, okay? Okay, so he picks a guitar. Now, one thing you notice as well is as I'm seeing um, the SD, right? It's very consistent as I'm saying pick one, okay? When you're running this particular type of assessment, you don't wanna use too many words. You don't wanna say, hey, you know, go ahead and pick one for me. Literally, you just wanna say pick one. You wanna make it as simple as possible when you're implementing this particular type of procedure as well as other procedures that we'll talk about in the future. But from MSWO, the instruction should be pick one. And now what you're gonna know now, and notice is that uh, the child is gonna be interacting with this item for a couple of seconds. The rule is 30 seconds, uh, approximately. If the child plays with it less time and gives it back to you, then that's okay. You know, you, you can get the item back sooner, but it's around 30 seconds, okay? He seems to be enjoying that guitar for sure. Okay, so there I said uh, my turn. Okay, that's a, that's a good way to prompt the individual to give the item back to you, okay? Now, people may ask, you know, what happens if my child that I'm working with does not return the item when I say, uh, give it back to me or, or my turn uh, and it actually you know there is problem behaviors due to that well possibly this particular procedure might not be the best one for your child okay so that's why it's very necessary that when you're doing assessments that are matched for your child taking into consideration skill level taking into consideration their overall behavior uh, problem that, that you're working with that they're not going to be interfering uh, the assessment process should be something that that uh, should not create more problem behaviors on the contrary it allows us to figure out what are the reinforcers what are the preference of uh, for these particular items that we're presenting to to the in front of the child okay so hope that makes sense right there so I did a good job there rotating once again Okay, so child goes for the car. Okay, now uh, for those watching and, and keeping track, very important to acknowledge that you know my data, my data collection is happening right on like on the spot. I have my clipboard, I have my data sheet there. I know people nowadays are using iPads. You know that could be a possibility too. I'm very old school, uh, very school old school behavior analyst here, but I, I like to do you know the paper and pen kind of situation. So I like to have those data sheets. And then what I would do sometimes is that I would take a picture of that and then upload it onto the child's file so that we can have a record for you know for medical records that what we're doing with the child, which includes the preference assessment method. Okay, so I rotated again. Okay, I rotated once again. I put the left on the right side. Okay, until I rotated the the the, the space or the uh, the location of these items consistently, right? And I think that's that's a very important thing there that you have to make that rotation left to right and then right to left. Okay, so I hope that you were able to acknowledge that. Okay, even with two items, I still made that rotation. All right.
right, and we're going to show the last one, the last item there. Okay, consistently implementing the same procedure, same instructions, pick one. Okay, child in place with the item. Okay, all right, so that right there is a really quick video model for you. Um, once again, that you're watching and, and you're able to get an idea of how the MSW is and or how it's conducted. I love the MSWO, by the way. It's really fast. It's a really good way to assess reinforcers on the spot and pretty consistently. I love to teach this method to people I work with. So I hope once again that this particular information helps you out. Um, highly suggest for you to once again go back to the other videos. We have one on MSW. Uh, I think we have to do one on pair choice. Hopefully we'll do that next week. But we have a variety of videos now that are, have a combination of once again the lecture, um, you know, the instructions. And overall, like, you know, showing the video and, and talking about the video, looking at these details that we're doing um, as we're kind of running through these procedures. OK, so once again, thank you so much. This is Dr. D from ABA with Dr. D. Much love to all of you guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. Give us likes there and uh, hit that notification bell because we have videos every week. So you want to make sure you don't miss out on those. Take care now.